In this chapter we're going to talk a little bit about stocks and stock valuation and I want to start with preferred stock. There are two basic types of stock, preferred stock and common stock. Preferred stock is the simplest model but it's also not something that you'll frequently encounter. We still do want to talk about preferred stock though, go over some of the characteristics of preferred stock and talk about the valuation of preferred stock. Some basic characteristics. First of all, preferred stock typically carries no or limited voting rights. When you're looking at stockholders as owners of the company that vote on the board of directors, we're talking about common stock there. Preferred stock supplies capital, but they do not have the same ownership rights such as voting rights. Preferred stock also typically pays a fixed dividend, often as a percentage of par value, so that no matter if the company is just moderately successful or super successful, you're still going to get the same payoff. You don't get the upside benefits that you would with common stocks. On the flip side, the preferred stock offers a more reliable dividend stream, more predictable, so you're making a little bit of a lower risk lower rate of return investment. Preferred stockholders receive dividend payments, not interest. The fixed dividends are kind of like the fixed coupons associated with bonds, but the dividend payments are not guaranteed like the coupon payments on bonds. A company that is struggling financially may skip preferred stock dividends and that will not force them into bankruptcy. So they don't have quite the reliability or safety of the coupon payments of bonds. Preferred stockholders are between bondholders and stockholders in the priority of claims. What that tells us is that bondholders get paid first, then preferred stockholders get paid second, and lastly we have the common stockholders. In the event of bankruptcy, that is true. So if there's a bankruptcy, the bondholders are paid first. If there's any capital left over, it goes to preferred stockholders. And then finally, if there's anything left over, it goes to common stockholders. It's very rare that common stockholders would get anything in an event of bankruptcy. It also refers to as far as regular income. The bondholders are paid their coupon payments first. Then the stockholders get paid dividends in the order of preferred and then finally if there's anything left over the common stockholders get dividends. Sometimes preferred shares are convertible into a fixed number of shares of common stock at the discretion of stockholders. We're not going to be talking about convertible preferred in this class but that is one of the things that some companies will do to attract people to preferred stock is they'll offer a conversion feature with it. That conversion feature means that the stockholder can convert their preferred stock into common stock when they deem it to be more efficient. And lastly, sometimes preferred stock share or preferred shares carry a call provision, which allows the issuer to buy them back for par value. In this class, we're going to assume all our preferred stock has an infinite maturity that you'll be getting those dividends in perpetuity. However, in practice, a lot of times preferred stocks carry call provisions, which means that once the company decides to retire that preferred stock, they can buy back the shares for par value. When we get into our preferred stock pricing models, we're going to use the no growth pricing model because remember dividends do not increase or decrease. They're a fixed percentage of par and we're assuming that our preferred stock has an infinite maturity so there's no ending point. So basically it boils down to a perpetuity. You receive that fixed dividend every year divided by the required return and that gives you the value of the stock. So a quick example with preferred stock, calculate the value of 5.5% preferred stock, the $100 par value, and an 8.2% required return. We're going to start with the stock pricing model that we've got listed up here, just the dividend divided by required return. Dividend divided by K. 
Now our dividend is a percentage of par value. So the dividend is equal to 5.5%. of the $100 par value, which means each share is going to pay a dividend of $5.50 per year. So we have our dividend, $5.50. The required return is that 8.2%. Now it's just a case of solving. Get out our calculator. 5.5 divided by 0.082. That's going to give us a value of $67.07. So this preferred stock is worth $67.07 to us today. If we were an investor and looking to purchase this stock and we contacted our broker and the broker said, yeah, I've got some of this available. It'll cost $65 per share. We'd say that's worthwhile. It's worth 67. We can buy it for 65. We'd want to make that investment. If we call our broker and he says the current price right now is $72 per share, we're not interested because it's only worth $67 based on our analysis, we don't want to pay more than $67.07 for that stock.